I wanted to share a few thoughts. Uh, you can see my completed dinner over there. Um, I'm in a motel room in an undisclosed location right now. I'm going to share some thoughts about recovering celibacy. And um, I'm going to talk about, when I mean celibacy, I mean voluntary celibacy. Volcel. And I also mean chaste celibacy. Um, so how does one restore oneself to a state of celibacy um, later on in life? After not living a life of celibacy for for much of much of one's adult existence, I think a big part of the secret of where where uh, what the trick is, if you will, is to remember yourself in your uh, childhood and early adolescent days, you know, uh, before you had a sex drive before, uh, I mean, there, there might've been some rudimentary sex drive there, but you, uh, didn't think to yourself, um, you know, I mean, most, most children, if, if they're living, uh, a proper sort of childhood, anyway. They, uh, you know, if you're 8, 9, 10, 11, even 12, uh, you don't think to yourself, oh, I'm just, like, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't even have a girlfriend. What kind of life am I living here? You know, you don't think to yourself, how can I fulfill my my needs? My, my uh, uh, <coughs> my needs as a man. Um, you you have a full life, but it doesn't in, include that. You do um, so so many things. I'm remembering my childhood just being loaded, loaded with activity, um, and and like fun activity. Um, and there wasn't, when I think of it now, there wasn't a sense of being held back. There wasn't a sense of, oh, if only I could go, uh, if I could only do this, then things, everything would be complete. Everything would fall into place. And I would have a, a happy, uh, a fulfilled, uh, you know, sense of completion in my life. Just because you didn't do sex, and you didn't think about um, having a girlfriend, and uh, and how your your life is so incomplete because you're not doing those kinds of things, that just doesn't occur to you in in those years. So w one has to recover that mindset, that sense of things that you are still you know it's it's not a it's not a question of you know sackcloth and ashes it's not a question of uh, uh you know uh you've got to get off of the mentality of oh i'm giving this up and uh it's it's i'm making this sacrifice and, and you know always thinking of it that way you instead you just think to yourself, I'm, I'm living a complete, fulfilled, uh, or, um, you know, well, maybe not fulfilled. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if any, any of us actually feels complete fulfillment in our adult lives, but it's, it's, it's just not thinking in terms of Oh, I'm doing. I, I'm doing without this this one part of life. It's thinking in terms of I, I'm doing these all of these other things, and I'm um, uh, 
I'm living a life that uh, is uh, dedicated to the pursuit of of intellectual ideas of uh, of adventure of spiritual uh, uh, tasks of you know um, quests of one kind or another however you you envision those Um, and I'm still experiencing the full palette of human emotions um, in the same way that I was when I was 8, 9, 10 years old I was then f- uh, experiencing the full palette of, of human emotions uh, you know, granted th- those were the emotions of a child now you're an adult so it's a bit different in, in a certain way but I have just found that when you um, reframe it when you reframe it to mean this is the these are the things that I am doing rather than these are the things that I've given up these are the things that I've that I'm abstaining from doing um, I, I'm, I'm living this life of doing without you know if you think in those terms then you will never never be free you will always be bound to this thing that that part of you thinks that you want or thinks that you need even if the better part of you you know given that you've you've made this decision based on on uh rational grounds given that you've made this decision based on life circumstances or what have you whatever they may be um, and those that those decisions are reasonable people make people throughout all of history have made reasonable decisions to live uh celibately as opposed to as opposed to being uh, um, being married or or, or uh, uh, seeking the, the the married life those are the two choices that you that you have if you to be the two uh, uh, possible choices that you have uh, that are that are allowed that are uh, you know on the menu as it were theologically speaking that are allowable um, living living the life of a of a uh, of a bed hopping uh, bachelor that's not on the that's not on the menu um, you know even if you would want to do it which has no it has no uh, that kind of life really has no uh, interest to me it's something I can't fathom doing it's something that I, I wouldn't ever be able to see myself doing um, but given that those, those, that the other two choices are marriage or celibacy if you opt for the second of those choices for good reasons then don't let anybody second guess you don't let anybody try to tell you oh you're just you just need you, you need uh, uh, um, you need you need to pursue married life you you need a companion well companions are are fine for some but not for others and If, again, 
you have made that choice and it, it's a reasonable choice based on lots of things, based on life circumstances, what, whatever it is. And I think it's important to, fr to frame it in your mind in a way that's positive, not in the sense of I'm giving this up, but in the sense of I'm pursuing this. The celibate life is not not is thus not defined as I'm uh, I'm not I don't get to do this thing that I want to do, but rather I'm doing all of these things that I do want to do, and that that uh, bring uh, bring happiness and joy, uh, and I'm I'm uh, living life to its fullest in my own way even if that way doesn't involve um, <laughs> orgasms you know the orgasm is overrated I'm not putting it down I'm not saying I'm not saying the orgasm is bad I'm just saying people who think all that what you need for happiness is to have regular orgasms with uh, a another person um, they must not they don't know a whole lot about human happiness because there are a hell of a lot of people who regularly have orgasms with other people who are who are the most miserable sods you've ever met it's not bringing them closer to happiness. It's not bringing them closer to fulfillment. So, again, I just wanted to uh, to uh, say that again. And, you know, um, this is just me speaking from my own personal experience from my own thinking about these kinds of things you know somebody who was uh, was married um, and uh, and now uh, is celibate again um, this is the way to think about it and you know there there are if if uh, the cri if the crisis that we're facing that they were talking about, the male loneliness crisis is real, you know, then there will, then there's going to be o uh, other men who will have to come to terms with, with this. And I'm not, I'm not telling anybody, uh, you should, this is what you should do. What I'm saying is if you feel that your circumstances make it the prudent choice, then this is the way to frame it in your mind. And when you frame it that way in your mind as a positive thing, um, not as a doing without, but as a <coughs> embracing of life in, in its own way, in its own fashion, in its own style, that uh, doesn't involve... Uh, marriage or the pursuit of, of a mate um, then you uh, have an easier time uh, with you know the, the kind of uh, those who would try to vex you or those thoughts that, that, that vex you from occasionally like that's it that, where they try to tell you or, or where you, the, the part of you inside of yourself that whines but I should have somebody to be with. I'm, I'm going to be lonely. Well, remind yourself that some of the loneliest people in the world are married people. Some of the loneliest people in the world are people who, who uh, have had a lot of sex. There's nothing about abstaining from sex that makes you lonely ipso facto, in and of itself. Again, think of yourself as a ten-year-old. Um, 
you didn't think my life is incomplete right now because I don't have a girlfriend when you were 10 years old. So now you're whatever, 35, 45, 55, 65, whatever you may be. Uh, it's later in life. Same, same rules apply. No reason why you can't think that, feel that same way about your own life. Um, at uh, whatever age you are. And, and there's no reason why you shouldn't live the life accor according to, to the lights that, uh, that you have been given, that you have discerned uh, are uh, as being the best, the most advantageous, the most prudent, uh, and uh, the most sensible way of living your life, that is, the celibate life. Thank you for watching.